and scale the thing is. It, the definitions popped in my head when you said them. Okay, let's um let's do this one here, guys. So first of all, can I get someone who's brave? This is a non-physics student. You only need to raise your hand once. Someone who doesn't take physics before, be brave. Is the first sort of vector a scalar and why? Alan, go ahead. Huh. There's no direction, so this one's got to be a scalar. If I say that little Jack runs at 2.5 meters per second, he could be running this way, this way, this way, straight up the wall. Who knows which way he's going? We don't know, right? Okay. Next one says Austin is pushing a crate with a force of 250 newtons west. Vector scalar. Chris, how do you know? Well, because there's the direction west. Yeah, it's going west. So what's the opposite of this going to be? Uh, 250 and east. I think this Jackson's on prep this period. I might have her come in here um, to show us what, how much a Newton is. So I'd be interested to know how much a Newton of force actually is. It's probably like, this would be, wouldn't be much, right? Anyway, a sound has an intensity of 50 decibels. Luke, I'm picking on you for this one because I remember you were talking about intensity of sound during your logarithms unit last year. Does this have, is this a scalar or a vector? Um, is this a vector? I don't really know. Okay, it's okay. It is not a vector. This is going to be a scalar. Why is this one a scalar? Somebody help me. Why is this one a scalar? Go ahead, Matt. There's no direction. Sound is sound, right? If I were to say, I hear a sound coming from the west, then I'd say, okay, well, then maybe that could be, but even probably not. This one's going to be a scalar. A train travels northwest at 115 kilometers per hour. Press go. Vector. Vector. What's the opposite? Uh, 100. 15 kilometers per hour southeast. Now, if you don't know how we lock that, I'm going to do this on the board. Northwest is going. It's going like this. So the opposite will just be going in the opposite direction, right? So southeast is going, or sorry, I thought backwards in that. Let's try that again. Good thing the internet didn't see that. Let's try that. Better? All right, a box travels 700 meters at a bearing of 120 degrees. Vector or scalar? Okay, go ahead, Nicole. Yeah. This is a vector, for sure. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. Did you get an answer for what the bearing would be? Would it be 300? Uh, let's find out, because I don't even know. Because if we do this, 120 degrees is going to be about like this, right? So this is, because this is 120 degrees, right? Right? So what's the opposite of that going to be then? 300. 300 degrees, okay? So it's going to, what will happen is, it's going to go in this direction. This little chunk is 30, which means this little chunk is 30, 90, 80, 90, 180, 270, 300 degrees. Or I can add 180 to it over the world, if that works better too. Yeah. So that's going to be 700 meters. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I get the logic of where I got that from, right? I just, you can, if it doesn't hurt to draw the diagram if you need to. If you just want to add 180, because it's easier to do that. Now, okay, Derek, I'm picking on you. A box has a weight of 84 newtons. Is this a vector or a scalar? Um, since weight is. Yeah, this is this is a tricky one, okay? And I wouldn't ask you this on your test. It's implied that weight is going downwards. That's the implication. I will be very clear if I give you this on a test. I'll say put the directions in there, okay? Um, for things. Um, so we're assuming it goes straight down. So what? So this is going to be a vector. Derek, what's the opposite? The opposite Now, since you're in physics, what's the name of that vector called? It's pointing straight up. It's okay. It's freezing. It's opposing force. Good. It is an opposing force. What's it called, though? No one. Right? Fn, which is called what? Normal force. Normal force. Yeah, it is Fn, but that's all. Yes. 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 Yes.
This is a trick question. The high temperature was 21 degrees Celsius. Vector scalar. This one's scalar. Now you might say, well, wouldn't it be like a positive and there'd be negative 21? Well, the thing is there's no zero isn't really a flexible number. If you look at Kelvin, does anyone know what Kelvin is? Yeah. Kelvin's like very, very small, right? So um, that's going to be a scalar. And finally, Superman travels 180 kilometers south, 25 degrees west. This one we should get, I hope. Red map. Vector. It's going to be a vector. I'm going to draw the diagram because it works better for me. <laughs> Superman, yeah. 100, so 25 degrees west is something like this. It's just the blocking. Okay, so then going up this way. should be north 25 degrees east. Okay, are we okay on the logic of this? Because this is just like a logic data, that's all this is. Chris, question. So since um, if you only get like an angle, you do like the 180 degrees, but if it isn't, then it's just you change like the, like the letters of it? Yeah, I... I don't want to put shortcuts in, like I don't like shortcuts for this. I draw the diagram, that's what I recommend doing. Because this is like not so baby case of what we're going to be getting into. We'll be getting into like adding five, you know, vectors and stuff like that together. So you don't wanna, you know, quickly try and do things. So I draw it, that's my recommendation. Okay, right. And if you can if you can skip it in your head, do it. But I always get mixed up as well as that west twenty five degrees sounds like it's easy to mix that up, I think. So all right, here we go. Example three. Oh, two, I guess we're at now. Okay. And I want you guys to be brave and try this, please. Name all the equivalent vectors. All right, here we go. Supposed to be a hexagon. It's supposed to be a seven. Six. X. That's what I meant to say, of course. It's, when I hear something embarrassing, my daughter, who was like two at the time, she had a math song that she used to sing that she knew all the different shapes. Like all the way up to nonagon, dodecagon. She's two years old. And her math teacher father knows none of the names of the shapes. A little embarrassing, yes, okay. I can pause in the video. You guys can do, find the equivalent vectors, please. Give me two sets of vectors that are the same, please. A, B, N, E, D. Ah, close. E, D, not D, E. Right? Because you know what I'm saying? Like it has to, has to be the same thing. So A, B, C, D, uh, C, D. Was I F? Good. Awesome. Somebody else want to give me? I see at least two more without doing backwards things here. So these two more sets of vectors are the same. Anybody else? Yeah, right? Um, B, C equals F, E. B, C equals F, E. Yeah, right? F, B equals B, C. And again, you can use similar triangles if you want to. So you're going back to grade 11, okay? Or grade 10. Uh, side length one, side length one, side length two, side length two, that means the third side thing is the same. And you're back on the one grade time, so that would be. Now you can also, sorry, you correct that? Could we also have AC and FD? AC and FD. Yes, you could. Those are technically vectors, but you're saying if we were to make ones like this along here, you're saying, yeah, we could call those be the same too. And then probably a third set too, then, right? Yeah. Probably this would match this. 
Now, I threw that BE on there just to be mean. Is anything equivalent to BE? Doesn't look like it, okay? We might be able to prove later on that maybe 2CD, like double the length of CD, but we're not going to talk about that today, though. That's the only thing that, yeah, okay? Right, okay, how the logical we did here? This shouldn't be too tough, right? It's just trade, right? You did the reverse of them? Yeah, yeah. the reverse of these ones could work too, right? So we could say BA is equal to DE, DC is equal to FA, CB is equal to yeah. Oh, but I mean, like, you state like all of them because I stated all eight. Yeah, you could do times. You can do a lot of more. Mm -hmm. We could just continue. Let's continue. Okay, this is the last one. I, if anyone, the problem was I got sick last year, as you may or may not remember, during 11U. And I love to give this example in 11U. And I'm sorry because this is a calculus class, but I want to do this example anyway because I love it. Okay? Um, this is just going to say find um, the distance of AF. This stands for magnitude. Okay? Magnitude means length for those of you who are physics students. Okay? Here we go. Excuse my poor drawing. Oh, Mr. Sapper, what's wrong with you? All right. It's just a rectangular prism, is what it is. Okay, my distances are going to be 4, 5, and 7. Did I, know, did I say AF? I did say AF, didn't I? Let's try that again. AF, I meant. Okay, can I borrow someone's textbook? Uh, this can be a little bit. I got it. Okay, I'll tell you what we're looking for here. It's sort of hard to see the diagram. I'm going to use this. Um, Christmas Child Samaritan's uh, box, what we're looking for. This is the distance that we're looking for. Okay, so you see what we're doing here? So if you take a look at the distance, you're, you're not going, you're going diagonally through the box of what you're doing here. That's where it's supposed to be. Okay, so you got it? So we're going from the bottom left on the front to the top right at the back. So we're going to see what we're trying to do there. Okay, this is a three-dimensional problem, okay, because we can't, you know, there's nothing else we can do there. Okay, so everyone got the idea here for this? Okay, can someone give me a suggestion from grade 11 or from physics? How do we solve this? Because this is, like, way too complicated for me. Even me as Mr. Sadler, who considers himself like the third best trigonometry person in the world, I'm not going to say who one or two are, okay? Um, I can't do three-dimensional trigonometry in my head. So what's a good suggestion to try for this one? Yes. I was thinking maybe of like the A, B, D, and C square. You make it into a triangle and then you do the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So you're saying take this Okay, and what are we calculating? Um, like if you split the line uh, of B and C you okay. get like a 4 and 5. Okay, so you want to find what distance, this one or this one? Uh, B and C, for sure. Mm. Or, I try to find this one. Okay. I probably do something that's AF. I'm going to say, if I add together AD, and then I add DF together, that'll probably get me AF. Okay. So see what I'm doing there? I'm going to take AD, this distance here, and then add it to this, and make a triangle on the diagonal, like that. Go. Now hold on a second, don't freak out. Okay, so I'm going to take that distance here, df. Okay, then I'm going to take this distance here, and then you're just going to pretend like the page is folded and then do a triangle again. Which is okay. Okay. If you don't like that, you could have also done this and this. Okay, and then a triangle like that if that's better for you. Is that better for you? Because they should both be the same. Okay. Okay, so let's start with this one. Let's find for DA. I have my distance here. There's four. There's five. Okay, I'm going to say that AC is equal to BD, which will make that five, and that's going to be X. 
Luke, I'm going to pick on you. How do you solve for x in that, in that square, in that triangle, or that, or whatever? Well, if I know this is 4 and this is 5, what's x going to be? It's okay, it's freezing. The freezing is okay. So let me help him here. Go ahead. You can totally use Poseidon in general, right? Oh, yeah. I need to figure out what's okay. Uh, it's, okay. it's okay. So I'm going to say x squared equals 4 squared plus 5 squared. x squared equals 16 plus 25. x equals the root of 41. And you can just leave it as the root of 41, please. Um, instead of telling me it's equal to 6.3949, okay, so you're going to 41. Is everyone okay? Why do you do that? That's the hard part now, because this is the thing. We're going to make a, a new vector here. So this is going to be f, this is df, and this distance up here is going to be a to d. That's what we're turning this into. This is along the diagonal. So I found the distance from A to D, which is the root of 41. That's going to be 7. This is going to be 1. So I'll get my box just to show you what we did again here. Oh, this is hard to see this way. So what Chris decided to do, and I would have done it differently because it would have been easier to see, but Chris found the distance from here to here. Okay. Then he turns that into a straight line together with the bottom of the straight line, and that's a right triangle again. Yeah. So you see that if I board, if I use my hand there for one straight line, and the bottom distance is another straight line, that's another right triangle. Everyone get the idea there? So you have a straight line, a straight line, you get a second right triangle. So when I show it, and I'm sorry, Chris, to embarrass you like this, I normally do it that I just use this distance and I go hypotenuse across the top, because then it's easier to see when you just take this. And this, and that also gives you a right You know where it's going to work. Okay. So now this is just the Pythagorean theorem again. So it's going to go y squared equals 7 squared plus root 41 squared. That's 49 plus 41. Um, y equals the square root of 90. Is that right? So that's going to be our distance across here is root 90. Okay, did anyone, does this look familiar to anyone else from grade 11 that wasn't in my class? So I don't know you were in my class, so this should probably look so familiar. And Callum, you were in my class too, so that anyone else that wasn't in there, do you guys do something like this? Yeah, I kind of know what you're talking about. Do you or do you not? Because this is like 3D. I kind of remember it. Because this is like 3D problem solving, right? This is where, again, in Callum, I remember this. Like Spider Man shoots his web north 20 degrees west at one building and he shoots his other web at north 40 degrees west at that building. How far apart are the two buildings? Oh, yeah. We see all of those awesome. We you know, I would have spent, spent the whole semester uh, if I could, but I wasn't able to. All right, homework. Uh, I'm sorry to shortchange again today. There just isn't that much to cover on this first uh, day here. Page 311, number 5, 6, 7, 9, 11, 17. We'll get back to checking homework um, starting Monday. And as well there, Anna, um, my homework for this weekend will be marking your tests and your assignments, so don't feel that your teacher's getting off not being anything this evening. You guys have all this kind of homework to do. Um, so I'll have to work a little harder than you this weekend. At least in math. Yeah. All right. So, that's all on this. Find a friend, find a neighbor with your questions. See if you don't have your textbook with you. And we'll, uh, yeah, see you on Monday. What do you, how many days do you want?